Land Rover Toolbox videos are accessing parts from Brookwell's Parts and Accessories, and you should be too. Okay, hello and welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos. Yeah, last week we uh, got this div ready to fit into a uh, Discovery One axle, and this is going to be good because it's a D2 uh, diff, which uh, is a little bit stronger than the original uh, D1. However, the weather today has been raining all day, and we are very weather dependent at the moment. You can see the trolley jack here is uh, saturated. So instead, it's just stopped raining, so I'm going to nip out here and do some tests on this engine. Now, this engine will be coming out at some point. I'll just show you my uh, underbonnet light which is rather dandy. I've had this a few years now, not really used it because it's too wide for a Defender, but it fits a Discovery. And we're going to be doing some oil pressure checks on this engine to see whether it's up to spec. I'm also going to show you something about the uh, testing a cylinder head gasket, an alternative uh, proposal. Some of you already know this. Right, so the pressure gauge, it goes um, into the oil gallery via where the oil pressure switch would be, where the filter is. The thread is a metric, a 10 by 1 mil. And this uh, kit has an adapter which is absolutely excellent, which will uh, take this. The size of the um, switch is exactly uh, 1 inch. This is a 1 inch uh, across the flats uh, socket. Right, so that needs to come out and then the adapter fitted. Right, so in the workshop manual for 300 TDI, the pressure engine warm at normal operating speeds, which is about 1500 RPM, is 25 to 55 PSI or pound force per square inch. Uh, kilograms force there is in centimeters square, which you can read very clearly, I hope, for all you metric lovers. Basically, the 300 TDI oil pump is uh, run off the crank. It's an expensive affair if the oil pump is worn and the casing is worn as well. And I'd advise if you're going to buy a vehicle, is actually check the oil pressure. We usually take the uh, reading as low as possible from the oil gallery. So you can see number one is the oil pump and number five will be the filter housing. So that's directly from the oil pump rather than reading it from the top of the engine where pressure would be lost anyway. Right, so we get a reading here, engine warm and that will be from uh, 25 PSI up to about 55. It should not be more than 55 PSI. If it is more than 55 PSI, then the pressure relief valve is stuck shut. If it's lower than 55, then maybe the pressure relief valve is uh, stuck open or the pump is warm, but we need to get an idea of what's going on. The reason you run this with a warm engine is the viscosity of the oil changes, so you want it at the thinnest point it possibly is. This one is okay, I would say there's a bit of wear in here somewhere, but to be honest with you, nothing to write home about. So yeah, that's passed, that's okay. Now we love gauges, don't we, because we need to test things. I showed you this a few weeks back, this is a leak back or a leak down test, which to be honest with you, it is very, very expensive to set up if you haven't got the equipment. If you have, then it's not a problem. This is a very good piece of equipment to use for checking for internal condition of your engine. However, you do need to set up the engine. For instance, if it's in the car, you need to set it right. And uh, if you get it wrong, well, basically what happens if the engine is not a TDC, for instance, watch this, it will pop round and then you have to reset everything. But it has its uses because you can see if there's leaky valves, for instance, uh, whether you have a loss of compression, or mainly, and this is what I'm getting to, you can check to see that the pressure that's going in there isn't coming through the cylinder head gasket. And this is one way of chest testing uh, the condition of a cylinder head gasket. It's quite laborious, you have to strip things down, it's intrusive. And sometimes, and this, this is quite important because sometimes you will not find a uh, cracked head or a, a small leak in a gasket because you have to have the engine hot to be able to find the crack. Now cracks and uh, gaskets possibly only leak when the engine is at running temperature. So what we have is this stuff. I've shown this before a couple of times, but this is for you new guys. Um, this one is basically called a sniff test and uh, what we're looking for is carbon dioxide 
in the cooling system which will leak through um, the exhaust valve if there's a crack there or around about the gasket which will let the gas into the cooling system. Now basically this is a chemical test and the reason we call it a sniff test is because it sniffs for carbon dioxide. Now I've got the engine hot, very hot and uh, I'm revving it to get it just that little bit hotter. Sometimes it would be better to actually take the fan off so you've not got cooling there so you can take it just a little bit over running temperature and uh, that's when cracks tend to open up in a cylinder head. Now I've been caught out with this, I, what I do is a test three times. If it fails like this it, it means that there is carbon dioxide present and this means that the cylinder head gasket is has failed or the head is cracked. At this point we wouldn't know but you can see the difference in colour this is a very very good test. Indication basically yeah there is problems. So just out of suggestion, I mean this kit is probably about £40, it's the price of a Land Rover head gasket or a genuine head gasket. If you're going to buy a vehicle, £40 is not a waste of money for this kit and you can use it over and over again which means you can help your mates out or if you do have problems, all the better. Now I did actually cheat with this because carbon dioxide you breathe out and I wasn't actually blowing that hard and I got some carbon dioxide to change the colour. So. In reality, actually, this engine is all right. I got this hot and then tested it. There's no gas coming through, and uh, basically, it's all good. So I'm happy with this. This is a peace of mind test. At least I know that the head isn't cracked. I did do this test three times. Matty Tester said, never got that to change colour on my old 300 TDI despite a warped head and a blown gasket. Strange. Not really. If it's a warped head, then it's a no-brainer because if the expansion tank is pressurising, you know you have a failed gasket. Now, cracks will always appear around the exhaust valve or in between the two. The inlet valve is cooler so that it generally doesn't crack. And you'll also find that these sort of cracks open out when the engines are being pushed so it can show up as an intermittent fault, for instance. So, we need to check also the charging system and nothing worse than... Uh, taking um, the engine back in and finding your alternators scuppered. Now what I have here is uh, a simple multimeter which is connected positive to negative and the battery at rest with no service, service charge is 12.7. That is a fully charged battery. Right, so I'll just start this up and what we're looking for is the charge rate at idle which is about, it should be about 14 point 14 something like that this at uh, 14 volts is fine now the thing is when you put a load on the alternator it has to work harder which means it has to turn to give you uh, a reading now this is dropped down with a load on it to 13.8 now I would suspect that the voltage regulator wasn't up to scratch or the cables were um, corroded and we weren't getting uh, full voltage through. This has actually drawn it down a bit and the alternator isn't giving me what I want. I want at least 14.1 or to 14.4 volts. A battery is better being charged at 15 volts however they don't do that with alternators because it tends to uh, bore the batteries and uh, evaporate the uh, electrolyte in it. So we, we look for 14. It's close but it's not really that close under load. If you noticed, I turn the lights on, I turn the heater on, and everything that which actually draws a lot of amperage out of the vehicle. Now, revving it up uh, is okay. Now, I'll take the load off it, and it's actually taking this up to 14.14, which is what I'm looking for. It varies, basically, with alternators, but 14 volts is fine. Okay, so now we have this reading. It's looking like the alternator, yeah, maybe needs a, a new regulator pack in it. Uh, or brushes but it's okay at the moment now the other thing which we can do is check for um, voltage drop on the fuse box we have uh, connections direct from the alternator and that's giving me a 14.7 at idle okay uh, yeah about 14.7 14.8 depending where I touch it if I get a good contact it should be about 14.8 14.18 uh, Okay, so yeah, that's good. 
All right, I'm happy with this. Now what we do to find out if we have a voltage drop is we put the negative on the positive terminal and then we go for the positive connection and it will tell us here. Okay, let's just get a proper contact. It's about 0 0.03 of a, a volt a voltage drop, which is very acceptable. Okay, you'll probably hear this at some point if you have more of a modern car than a 300 TDI and this is an alternator ripple. And basically, it is AC current that is a, a over DC current which is escaping into the system. Now, I'm on the battery terminals here and this multimeter is set to AC coupling, uh, reading at 2 volts and it's looking for AC voltage over the DC. Connected directly to the back of the B plus terminal, you can see this is actually the ripple uh, waveform from the alternator. Now, um, 0 0.2 of a, um, a volt is its peak, both um, plus and minus, and uh, you'll see an occasional spike. That's nothing to be worried about. However, if this is a large waveform, it shows that there's a lot of AC voltage escaping into the system not so um, not so good basically because this will point out whether the diodes are failing if they are failing then it will drain your battery because it will be a, a short to earth for instance this will be where you can't find a parasitic drain and it will be the alternator that's at fault however this one's good no problem there so i'm happy with this now i do actually have a parasitic drain you see here, it was at 14 um, volts. I then disconnected the uh, connector just momentarily. And then I switched the engine off. And basically now what's happening here, we have something called a, a, a surface charge, which is at 13.6. You need to remove this by just putting a load on the battery for a little while just um, to t take the surface charge up so you can actually see what the charge of the battery is. Now this will decrease rather quickly, as you can see here. Now this, on this actual uh, multimeter, is a graphing multimeter. So you're watching voltage over time, and the voltage is now creeping down. It's under load, um, without the engine running, and it's 12.2. Now as soon as I switch the load off, okay, the battery will then go back to its normal state which will then tell you roughly what the health of it is. Now it's 12.7, which is fully charged. 12.4 is half discharged, which means if it's just been charged up and it goes like that, it will be um, at 50% life. And 12 volts is a discharged battery. So we've got a good battery here as well, and I'm quite happy with these results. So it's just a few bits of information for testing vehicles. I do uh, know where the parasitic drain is because it's this little pig in the back here. This light is on all the time, even with all the doors shut. So it's taking power out of the battery over two days.